Hi, this is a quick demo of the new differ functionality in version 1.4 of JSON Studio. It is a demo of the functionality that allows you to compare between data in a relational database to data inside MongoDB. And it's very useful when your project starts out with a source within a relational database. So your data might reside in a relational database and you want to move that data into MongoDB and you have some ETL process, but you're not sure if all the data made it through or if it's in the right format or if there are any errors. So the differ allows you to compare data in relational to MongoDB. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start out with a MySQL database. I stored some data um, in the classic models database. I'll show you what that data looks like. So I have a few tables. I have a customer's table, an employee's table, an order's table, you know, very simple data. Um, if I do a select star from customers, you'll see, for example, what that data looks like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the data from the MySQL database and import it into um, MongoDB. Uh, and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to take the customer's table as is, and I'm going to take all the orders information. And I'm going to do this in a very simple way. Um, the first thing, let me uh, find my query here. Okay, so for example, if I want to take the data from the orders, and I want to create a MongoDB collection from it, um, you'll notice that uh, up here in the, in the table I have in my SQL, I have an orders table, and I have an order details table, and I have a product table, and I have a customers table. And really, every order, if I want it in MongoDB, I have to denormalize it because there's data in each one of these tables that pertains to the order. So that's why I have here a select star from uh, four tables, order details, orders, customers, products, and I'm doing a join between them, and I'm dumping it into a CSV, okay? Um, actually, let me just change this, uh, the name of the CSV, because I already have one. There we go. And then the same I'll do for the customers table, and so once I have these, um, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, here's the customer CSV. Um, and you see every line here has the customer number and the name, and the phone number, and all kinds of data about the customer. And notice these uh, black uh, characters, or, you know, these are uh, weird UTF characters. And th that's actually important, you'll see in a second why. Um, but those are my two CSVs. There's a customer CSV and there's a orders CSV. And this is the data that I am uh, importing into MongoDB. And I'm importing it using uh, just straight uh, Mongo import. So, you know, one command is this one where I do Mongo import into the um, orders collection from the CSV and the other one is this one that I import into the customers collection from the customer CSV and so uh, let me log in and show you what the data then looks like um, and what I'm what I'm doing is I'm using JSON studio to browse the data um, so here's my customer uh, collection so you see every document in here is now a customer and that comes directly from uh, the data that was exported from MySQL. And the orders is also, you know, a very similar um, collection, but uh, each document in here actually comes from multiple tables in the MySQL database, right? So there are things like order date, uh, which comes from the orders table, but there's things like order line number, and that comes from the um, order details, right? If I do a desk order details, order details, then you see that the order number is part of that table. So really every document over here in the MongoDB collection 
um, uh, comes from one of the four tables. Some, some things come from the order table, some from the uh, order details, the customer name comes from the customer. So really this is a denormalized schema coming from the relational. And so the, the question that, that we have, okay, we've, we've taken the data out from MySQL, we put it into MongoDB, everything looks great, uh, you know, I can query things and, 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 and use the data now, but I'm faced with the question, is it, is it true that all the data made it through? Were there any errors? And actually, I know that there were errors, right? Because when you look here, you know, these are all errors that were generated from the uh, from the import, the other way I can I can know is, for example, here in my uh, orders in my orders collection, I see that there are 1391 um, documents. But if I go to my MySQL and I do uh, select count star, and I just copy this whole thing. And this is what I exported, you see that there are actually 2,900 rows in the relational table. So, so obviously there were a lot of problems in the CTL. There were a lot of problems when I imported the data, and the question is, what were the problems and why did I have problems? And that's where the differ uh, comes in very useful. So there are two modes that I'm going to show you in the differ. The first is a simple mode where I'm just going to compare a table versus a collection. So I have a customer's table in the MySQL database and I have a uh, customer's collection in the MongoDB database and I want to compare them. And so the command that I'm going to use is this one. Okay, but let me first show you the config file on, on, uh, that's used for, for the differ. Okay, so if I do cat sonar differ.con this is a configuration file that just uh, defines all my data sources. So I have here a data source called source, which is a MongoDB database called test, running on localhost, listening on port 4717. And then I also have a MySQL database, and I'm connecting to it over ODBC, and, this, and, the, and these are the details on how I connect to the classic models database. And so now I'm going to run this, and, and, and this is the command that I'm going to run. Okay, now, however, let me give it a different name. Okay, so, so let me explain what this command line is saying. I'm, I'm running the sonar differ SQL utility. And give it again a name so that every result document has that name, and therefore I can look and see what the diffs were for this one run, because I may be running many, many diffs at, at one time. And what I'm doing here is I'm comparing two things. The first is this one. So I'm comparing the customer's table in the MySQL data source. And remember, the MySQL data source was defined in the configuration file. And I'm comparing it to the customer's collection in the source data source. And the source data source is this MongoDB collection. And I'm going to store the results in out, and out is yet another data source, so it's another MongoDB database. So all the results that the differ is going to produce are always stored in a MongoDB database. And the last thing I have to do is I have to tell the system, how do I compare two objects or, or, or a document in a row in this case, right? And the way that I compare the two is using the customer number. So the customer number is my unique identifier, right? If I look at, if I do a des desk of customer, customer, customers, customers, then you can see that the customer number is the primary key, therefore it makes sense for me to compare it using that. Okay, so now I'm going to run this. And what it's going to do is it's going to connect to the MySQL database, and it's going to connect to the MongoDB database, and then it's going to read all the rows and compare them. Okay, so the processing was done. And, and, and when processing is finished, what happens is two collections get created uh, in whatever the data source for out was, which happens to be the same database that I'm in right now. So the two collections that get created are different results, and differ deltas. This is what the differ produces. Then um, the differ results 
gives me a document that tells me exactly what was run and what the and what the what the diff is. So it tells me, for example, that the number of documents compared were 101. So 101 rows were compared, and it tells me what the job was. And then what it tells me is it tells me two things. One is uh, which which objects or documents or rows were in the source only. So we're in the source, but not in the target. So in, in, my, in my case, because this is what I was running, and this is the source, so there are uh, rows in the MySQL database that never made it into the uh, MongoDB database. And then at the end, it also tells me what the number of deltas are. So uh, things that did make it into the MongoDB database, and yet... Um, there is a delta. It's not exactly the same. So something happened in my ETL. Um, so you know, so so the differ A shows me that the, it, I do have a problem because the, the the what what I wanted to see here is that in source only would be empty, and that number of deltas would be zero. Then I know that the ETL uh, operated correctly. Uh, but more more than that, it also shows me. Uh, something that I can now go and figure out what happened. So, for example, it shows me that it's 144. And so what I can do is I can go back to my MySQL database and do a select star from uh, customers where uh, customer number equals 144. And, you know, if I look at this, and if you remember back to these uh, weird characters and the errors I had from the Mongo import, I think now I can understand what's going on, right? This string here has a non-ASCII character, and this has a non-ASCII character. So that's why these, uh, these failed in the Mongo import. And so I need to do something a bit more sophisticated in, in the way I get the data inside. And then, and then to see... For example, what a delta looks like. Okay, so now let me look at the delta documents. Okay, so what the delta documents look like is there's always a delta sub document, and in it really is the structure of the document or the object. And if I have something like this, it means that it is exactly the same in the source and the target. So, so both the source and the target for um, this particular customer has city not uh, and country France. This is exactly the same. But on the other hand, if I look at the postal code, so in in the source, which is in MySQL, the postal code has a string, which is a value of 44,000. But in my MongoDB database, the thing was imported as the number 44,000. And so that may or may not be okay, but at least now I can I can go figure it out. And if I really want to make sure that that's the case, I can do this very easily. The customer number is 103, so I can do some like uh, select where the customer number is 103. All right, so you can see here, this is a, the postal code here indeed. So you can see it's aligned to the left, so indeed it is a string. Uh, but if I go, for example, and look at the customer's collection and look for the customer number uh, 103, so I'm doing a query here, and this is my result set, you can see that the postal code in MongoDB is indeed a number. And so, you know, the differ helped me find that. Um, so that's one example. Second example is a little more sophisticated, right, because in... In the, in the first example, what I did with the um, what I did with the differ is I compared an entire collection to an entire uh, uh, table. But in in the other case where I did the orders, I can't really do that because there is one collection in MongoDB, but there are multiple tables inside uh, the relational database. And so what I can do, and let, let me just uh, grab this and copy it and then explain it, is I can run a second uh, diff command. Okay, let me call the let, let me give it a name of two so that I can identify it easily. 
So this is this is what I'm calling the results, right? So every result is going to have SQL2 in it. And I'm still comparing uh, this, the MySQL data with the Mongo data. But now I'm, put in, I'm putting it in one. My key is not a customer number, but it's two fields. It's order number and order line number. Because if you remember, the, the data is really every order order line is the primary row and it brings through the join it brings data from the order table and the customer data and the product table and so really what i'm compare what what i'm comparing the orders collection to is this entire sql statement so it's select star from order details orders customers products where and i have all the join conditions and so what it's going to do is it's going to run that SQL statement on the database and then it'll bring back one row at a time and for each one of those rows it'll try to find which document in the orders collection in MongoDB has the same order number and order line number. Okay, so if I run this what it'll do is it'll create a new uh, a new diff right so if I go back to my uh, LMRM results. You saw before I had LMRM different results had two objects or two documents. Now it has uh, had one. Now it has two. It still has the SQL one from before, but now it has another one called SQL two, and it shows me here exactly what it did, what it compared, etc. And again, it's showing me all the. Um, it, it's showing me, for example, that in the database I have an order number called. 10125 with a line number called 1 and I have an order number 10125 and a line number 2 and those do not even exist in the MongoDB collection. Plus I have 1300, a little over 1300 deltas and again if I look at any one of those deltas, if I go out, select the delta and say, you know, show me only the deltas for SQL 2 Okay, then it, it, it'll start showing me each one of them and you can see where the deltas are so the nulls are not coming out right. Um, uh, here I have again the postal code issue. Um, here I have a date issue. So in the, in the database this is a uh, real date time whereas in the MongoDB database after I moved it to a CSV and imported it came in as a string. And so I really lost something really important, the fact that it's a date, because then if I need to do a, a date range search, it, it will all operate incorrectly. And so you can see that the differ is very valuable in making sure that the data coming out from relational into Mongo is coming, is, is, is coming in correctly. Um, this, this functionality of comparing relational to uh, Mongo is available in the differ in JSON Studio version 1.4 and up. Uh, in terms of support for relational databases, it's pretty much any relational database, uh, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, any, anything uh, from which you have connectivity from a Linux machine um, using a native driver or using an ODBC driver. And uh, it's a very simple utility, very easy to use, and very useful for QAing and validating uh, your data. Thank you, and goodbye.